Lauren Shapiro is a costume designer on The Late a Late Show with James Corden. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. Here to ask you, Lauren, uh, what, what, what does the life of a costume designer on The Late Late Show look like? Well, today it's a lot of putting out a whole bunch of miniature fires. It's, um, uh, it's it's right now because we've just come back from such a you know long break of not having in studio audience, um, and right now we're we're getting more in studio guests and we're able to do more sketches now with talent. Um, everybody's just sort of gearing up, and there's a lot of things being thrown at me at one time. <laughs> so it's really busy. I mean, it's great. It's great that we have, you know, it's so much more fun for me to do these sketches than it is just to dress James and the man in studio every day. So it's fun, but it's just a lot. It's just a lot. Yeah. Is it, is it what, can you tell us one of the fires you're having to deal with today without giving away too much? Um, oh, hmm. Uh, well, um, we have a big sketch with a very notable personality tomorrow morning, which is confidential. I can't say okay, who it is, yeah. um, but it's a big sketch. And um, because there's so many things in the works and all everybody's wheels are going at the same time, um, James doesn't always have t time to get to like the final reading of the script. Mm -hmm. So what happened was everybody just came off a Memorial Day holiday just came back this morning and then notes started coming in. So tomorrow, this huge, uh, this huge sketch that we're doing is now going to involve a cowboy hat with an umbrella poking out of, it's just like one of those gag sketches that I'm like, oh, I have no time to prep for this, but it's happening. So I need to just do it. Uh, of it. Uh, what do you think, uh, what, what is the costume that you've had to design uh, for the show that was the trickiest one to get right? Oh God, there's been so many. Oh my God, there's been so many. Um, you know, I'm gonna say that we did a sketch where James was the fifth member of KISS, um, which of course we did because we're the Late Late Show. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, I made the costume and it turned out beautifully and it was just like very rock and roll and very silver and black with all the, you know, other members. And um, I had these boots, which if you know anything about Kiss, the boots are like 50% of the whole costume. And when it, I don't usually have a fitting with James. I usually just know his sizes. And when it came time to put the actual costume on him, the boots didn't fit. <laughs> And I was tear just tearing out my hair and I'm on the floor and I'm like trying to shove his foot in and he's like trying to help me. And like, just, it was just, it was, if the boots didn't fit the outfit it would have just been stupid. It would have just looked terrible. So, I mean, there's a bazillion of those instances where somehow it just comes together at the last minute and works out. It's like a, like Cinderella, just trying to shove that shoe yeah. into the foot. like. <laughs> God, I was like, please just, sh he's like, I don't Lauren, I don't think this is gonna work. And I'm like, it's gonna work. He's like, Lauren, I don't know, maybe I should just, and I'm like, no, it's gonna work. It's gonna did work. It, did they get on? Did oh, you yeah. get on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And then, yeah. and then all the shots were just from the waist up in the sketch, no? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I specifically talked to the, our okay. staff, and talked to them, I was like, lots of full length shots of him because those boots were, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's uh, good. Like, obviously, with the Late Show, there are like stuff that's filmed in the studio. There's remotes. There's like all that sort of stuff. Do you need to have different considerations on the costumes based on sort of the context in which it's getting filmed? Um, I well, I mean, it depends on location. I mean, mm -hmm. there's some things where they're just going to get filthy. Like tomorrow yeah. sketch is cowboy thing and they're just going to get really dirty and like I know it but um not really I to honestly no it's um I just try to do the very best look for what what the sketch calls for regardless of where we're going to be yeah yeah um what's been your favorite scene that you've had to dress people for oh uh <laughs> there was one recent one that I really enjoyed um was uh it was with Kristen Wiig and Annie Mumolo, 
and it was the the sketch was that James and Annie Mamolo and Kristen Wiig got uh, fired from three notable shows that happened in 2020. And you know, it's a comedic take on each of the shows, and one of them was like Queen's Gambit, and one of them was um, the un the unknowing is that what it's called with Hugh Grant oh, um, the un undoing maybe undoing that's it yeah. the undoing I, I they all run together and yeah. then um you know I think it's so much more fun when I get to costume an actor or an actress who's familiar with comedy and who knows the drill because mm. they're so much more likely to to cooperate wholeheartedly and like get into it. And with those two actresses, they were like, yeah, let's do this. And it just made it so much more fun for me because, you know, sometimes there's people who are like, oh, I don't really know that's not gonna look flattering or, uh, you know, I don't really know that's not my style. And when it's people who do comedy, oh, and like Paul Rudd, he was also really super fun to work with. When it's people who do comedy, they're just so, they're like, let's go for it. And so it's more fun for me because I get to be a little bit more outrageous with my costume choices. Yeah. What um what's something that with um like this show like that you do the costumes for that people probably wouldn't even notice like there's costume work being done and the like sort of the sort of more under the radar costume design. I think it's ever in the everyday mm -hmm. in the everyday um like you know, my mother or my aunt will, you know, email me and say, oh, you know, I saw, you know, James is looking really great these days. And like, oh, did you have anything to do with, oh, he was wearing this beautiful suit the other day. Did you know about it? I'm like, yeah, I know about it. I, I dress him every day. But it's when people don't realize that um, every article of clothing that goes on the talent in a show, including our band, including James, including everybody who's on camera goes through me first. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that that's part of the design of the show. They just think like, oh, maybe these people just went in their closet and picked out something to wear today. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm actually responsible for the, for the aesthetic of the entirety of the wardrobe of the show, so. Yeah. With um, not having a studio audience recently, uh, in recent times, uh, we've seen more of the crew and more of the uh, other producers, like, you know, just the people in the room and not a studio audience there. And there's been some nice little banner back and forth. Have, have those people now been lining up saying, or have you been chasing them down going, you have to wear this? Or they're going, oh, do I now need to get dressed? Like... I mean, I think, no, first of all, yeah. my, I don't think my executive producers need any help. They're both you know, <laughs> all so well-dressed. There's just like a well-dressed group of people that work on the show. Um, no, but I think that they have been stepping up their game a bit. Uh, <laughs> the wardrobes, like they've definitely upped their game since being on camera. Yeah. Do you have, um, like, like here's, here's a sort of question. Like you sort of address uh, uh, James and the, the band every day, like, for, for a, 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 a tie and suit of James's, like how often will that be in a rotation? Like, does it, you like, you know, is it one and done or does he rewear suits and shirts and ties? Like, um, that's such a good question. And also the fact that you ha have to ask tells yeah. me that like, I'm doing kind of the right thing. Um, all of his suits are custom made and they are, uh, I mean, they're all beautifully custom made. And so he has a closet that I choose from. He's got, I'd say about a dozen suits right now. And every season they sort of turn over every maybe six months. Um, and I just choose from them and then I accessorize them according to sort of what we feel like that day or what maybe sometimes I'll, you know, spice it up and get some new ties and some new shirts. Um, but yeah, they're all made exactly for him. So it's yeah. not like I can just go you know, to the mall and pick something off the rack. Yeah. Um, how, you said he's got about a uh, dozen sort of suits. How, in rotation right now, yeah. Yeah, in rotation right now. How many ties does he have in rotation? Oh God. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd say there's about 35 in rotation right now. Oh, wow. um, I, I do a little spring cleaning every few months to yeah, pick yeah. up the ones that he doesn't like. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, what what was uh, in this past year on the Late Late Show um, sort of, did you think was the funniest sketch that you had to do? Uh, the, whew, uh, 
I mean, actually, it was one that we just did. We just oh, nice. did. Um, it, it was last week. It was with the Jonas Brothers, and it was the Nate. The writer was um, Nate uh, Fernald, and uh, it was the origin story of uh, one of the sketches. Was the origin story of, of Eeyore's tale from Winnie the Pooh, and it was a little bit darker than what we normally do. And it was just, um, it was like uh, Lady and the Tramp, uh, Winnie the Pooh. It was just, a, it was just fun. It was a, it was weird. Mm. It, it just, um, and they, they were great. Those guys, uh, the talent was really great, but yeah, it was, it was funny and weird and a little bit kind of darker than what we normally do. Yeah. Boy, that's cool. Uh, what, what's, um, what's something that sort of like, I don't know, like what, what's been like, obviously this year has been changed and stuff, but what, what's been the biggest constant through your time on this show with the so many different types of sketches and, and things that you've had to do. It seems like a fairly versatile show to be doing costumes for what's the constant. Um, who, what is a constant? Um, it is always something new. It is always something new that is the constant is you know i have huge uh wardrobe containers of storage from past shows and past uh, sketches and i always put things in there going like well we're gonna need this at some point we're gonna and we of course use those things over and over like you know helmets and shields and weird stuff like that but every time something comes up i'm like do we i'll stop and think do we have something like that i'm like no, we have to go out and get it because we've never done this before. It's always something new. It's like, it's, we, we are really, I feel like the show is really good about um, keeping things sort of fresh and interesting. Like, you know, we have things that we repeat for sure, but um, it's just always something that I just look at, read the email and I'm like, what in the world is it this time? Like, what am I going to have to come up with this time? I don't know. How long do you typically have to throw uh, costumes together? Um, that is also a good question. Um, it really depends. Some, some days, uh, or some sketches, they give me a lot of lead time. I'll have like a week. Um, and then sometimes I'll have like 24 to 48 hours, which is stressful. Yeah. Did, like, um, was there something that you like watched growing up that made you want to get into costume designing a particular film or TV show? Um, yeah, there was, there wasn't one specific thing, but when I grew up in the eighties, um, and there was a lot of John Hughes movies back then, they were really just the thing. And like movies like, um, The Breakfast Club or Pretty in Pink, every character was so distinctly defined by their wardrobe. Um, I never really thought about it until I got into costume design, but honestly, like if you, if I stopped to think about any of those characters from any of those movies growing up, like, um, um, you know, seeing almost fire or like any of those big 80s blockbuster movies, I can immediately reference what the character's wardrobe is. And I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of other people can too. Um, and then also Saturday Night Live, of course, because it's, it's like brilliant. It's brilliant. And the costume team over there has done a, an amazing genius job, like for, you know, 46 seasons. So, yeah. The, uh, that, that, that's it. yeah, because when you think about The Breakfast Club, like, particularly, like, they had to say so much with the costumes of that rag, yeah. like, because they were also yeah. different sort of personality types and types of school shit. I mean, yeah, you know, I just think that if you are going to design a movie, of course, you know, everything comes down to, like, the director and the director of photography, but when you look at the production design and you look at the costume design, if you took those two things away, there wouldn't be a movie. Mm. They're just yeah. so key to making, um, to, to, to the project having a voice. Yeah. When, when you were sort of, like, and it's sort of interesting you mentioned Saturday Night Live because, like, did, did you picture yourself working in sort of variety sort of type work or were you thinking more dramas or comedies or you just had no idea no i never in a million years thought i would be doing a sketch comedy i just it wasn't my thing you know before i got into tv i did a lot of commercials which are not it's not sketch comedy you know it's, no. it was very um you know a, like a, a car commercial or a coffee machine commercial and it was very dressed down it wasn't comedic really um I just, this happened so unexpectedly for me and it's been such 
and kind of like a pleasant, unexpected, awesome turn of events that I get to do, that I get to do this now. I just never planned on it. Mm. And you've, uh, from what I understand, uh, received two nominations from the Costume Designer Guild. Uh, what, what was it like to get that sort of industry recognition? Um, I will tell you, it felt really amazing to get yeah. that validation and that recognition from my peers. Um, Cause these are people who understand what it is to do what I do. Like I have amazing producers on the show, but they've never done my job. So they don't know what exactly is involved. And so, when peers like, um, you know, to, to be nominated alongside with like the Saturday Night Live designers or um, Ruth Carter, you know, like these amazing designers. I was like, wow, that just felt like my work is being recognized as just as awesome as theirs. And that was yeah. Cool. Mm, yeah. Uh, to, to finish up, Lauren, um, what, uh, if if you had to wear one of the costumes you've made for the Late Late Show, which one would you want to wear? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, God. It Well, it most likely would be a sketch that we did with Jenny Slate. And it was when the movie Venom came out. <laughs> and um, it was all 90s. It was all 90s based. I mean, that's just sort of my my generation. So yeah. I think it would probably have to be what I costumed her in. Ah, fantastic. Well, Lauren, thanks so much for talking with us today. All the best of luck with the upcoming Emmy Award nominations. Uh, we're, we're in the thick of Emmy season right now. And people watching this interview can go to goldderby.com to make your own awards predictions and watch other contender interviews. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Matt. 